The Elder Scrolls VI is an open-world action role-playing video game that has been developed by Bethesda Game Studios and published by Bethesda Softworks. The game is the follow-up to 2011's The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim and was formally announced back in 2018. Since then, rumors have circulated around the location, when to expect the game, and what platforms we will see the title on. So let's break down all of these and more. As always, all the sources will be linked in the description below, so make sure to check those out and support those original articles. Also, make sure to follow me on Twitter at Fonked2 for updates on all future videos. With that out of the way, let's get into everything we know about The Elder Scrolls VI. I want to start by discussing the first major leak that circulated for The Elder Scrolls VI back in 2014 and is commonly referred to as the Internal Bethesda Memo. If you aren't familiar, it is a document that supposedly came from Bethesda and ZeniMax and is for employees who are attending E3 2014 and says what the employees are and aren't allowed to talk about. The list includes terms like Fallout, Fallout 4, Fallout Nuka World, Boston Project, Elder Scrolls, Elder Scrolls 6, and the Project Greenheart. This caught the attention of some fans because Greenheart is the name of one of the major cities in Valenwood, which is one of the bigger areas that could be a potential location in the Elder Scrolls 6. But a clever group of community members on Reddit searched to find out where the document was originally posted and traced it back to a Twitter account that was known for spreading around fake gaming rumors. The account was then deleted, so yes this document is fake, and if you see individuals still discussing the internal Bethesda document, this is where the rumor comes from and it has no validity to it. The first actual news about The Elder Scrolls 6 was at E3 2018. Bethesda attended the event and released the official announcement teaser. The teaser itself was only 36 seconds, and the main visual of the teaser was showing off the next world we would be playing in in the Elder Scrolls series, along with the logo for the game. Bethesda has been very vocal that Elder Scrolls 6 won't be released until after their other project, Starfield, is done first, and that is another project that we know very little about. And in an interview with VGR, Pete Hines, the vice president of Bethesda, answered why the team decided to announce the game so early in the development process. He said, quote, Number one, we're honestly a little tired of being asked about Elder Scrolls 6, and the Starfield trademark filing and dancing around those things. Elder Scrolls 6, we didn't really dance around. We said, yes, we're going to do it, but there are two games to come first. And this sums it up perfectly that the team just wanted to get ahead of all the rumors and speculation and people constantly asking about it, and this is the best way to do it. The trailer doesn't give a release date, platforms, or anything. All they say is, yes, we're working on it, yes, it's coming, here's a quick teaser for fans to speculate and discuss while they're waiting. And the last story I want to cover about the reveal also comes from an interview at E3 2018 between Jeff Keighley and Todd Howard, the game director and executive producer at Bethesda. Howard said in regards to the trailer that, quote, There is some things there to pick apart, but we'll let our fans do that. He continued on saying, I would say Elder Scrolls 6 is in pre-production and Starfield is in production. It's a game we've been making for a while. Starfield is playable, Elder Scrolls 6, not in that way yet. And none of this is too surprising. Most fans know that Bethesda has ported Skyrim to every device imaginable, and they aren't really in a rush to create the next Elder Scrolls game. Plus, fans have picked apart the smallest details in the trailer, trying to deduce where the setting for Elder Scrolls 6 will be set, and there are many ideas, which I will discuss a little later in this video. Also, the fact that Elder Scrolls 6 is not playable should not shock anyone if the game is just entering pre-production, and this phase usually involves concepting out the game and working on the engine rather than actually putting game assets together and creating the story. So none of this is too surprising, it seems like everything is moving how it should. I want to continue on and discuss the development of the title after the reveal. Pete Hines did say the game was officially in pre-production back in 2018, so let's discuss what happened since that point. The next news about the title comes around the time of E3 2019. Todd Howard did an interview with IGN Unfiltered and discussed Elder Scrolls 6. 
Todd discussed a few different points that fans have taken from the conversation. He starts by saying that everyone should be patient when waiting for this project, that it is going to take more time before the game is even close to be ready for release. He goes on to say that time though has helped this project in terms of giving fans time away from the series. He says that for those fans who played Skyrim all those years ago, now being able to return to the franchise in the form of The Elder Scrolls 6 with fresh eyes, and he says when they see the game they will understand the game better in terms of all the new technology and what the team's vision for the project is. And he closes out by saying the team wants to create another project like Skyrim that the community will be able to play for another decade. And I agree with a lot of this, I think it is smart that having a big gap between games makes people more nostalgic and then when the next title does come it makes it that much more exciting. The next news for the title came in May of 2020 from Pete Hines. He was asked when we can expect more info on Elder Scrolls 6, and Pete responded saying quote, It's after Starfield, which you pretty much know nothing about. So if you're coming at me for details now, and not years from now, I'm failing to properly manage your expectations. And this doesn't give us too many details about where the game might be in the development cycle until a fan on Reddit who had been following Bethesda job listings found some interesting positions in January of 2020. He found one posting that was looking for a talented programmer to join the team that is pushing the bleeding edge of RPG development for PC and consoles. They will also be collaborating on implementation of new gameplay features, player and character behavior, combat powers mechanics, and user interface. The community member speculated that it's probably too late in the development cycle for Starfield to still need user interface, which points to Bethesda finally ramping up the production on Elder Scrolls 6. Along with the fact that another job posting was looking for a video editor, which seems like that posting could be in reference to Starfield needing a new trailer and potentially reaching the end of development and we're getting closer to a release. And a lot of this is just speculation, but it makes sense right from the surface that yes, Bethesda, it has been two years at 2020 by the time they announced Elder Scrolls 6, and they probably are exiting pre-production and starting actual production and starting to ramp up that way, while a lot of Starfield's jobs can start shifting to what's next for the project, do we need trailers, do we need marketing, what's going to be the next move for a release. So it looks like this shift is happening behind the scenes, whether or not Bethesda says it publicly or not. Another big development update came throughout the interview cycle and was around the updated version of the Elder Scrolls engine. And the team has said time and time again this engine change will not be overnight. The team has stated that changes were happening with their engine with all their projects piece by piece. The changes really started for the engine for Fallout 76, and then again for Starfield, and even more changes for The Elder Scrolls 6. Todd Howard went further and said, quote, There's always one project that's in pre-production, maybe for years, and another one we have in full production. Usually what's happening, take an animation system change that we were doing right now, we're finishing for one of our projects, a project in pre-production getting a new animation system whereas the one in full production is using the old one. And immediately due to the time that this quote was said, it sounds like he's referencing Starfield as the game that is in full production with the old animation system and Elder Scrolls 6 is the game in pre-production getting the new animation system. Along with the engine change, it also looks like it will be part of a new animation system the team is working on using photogrammetry, which allows the developers to actually go to areas in our world or even with actors and take high quality images which then can be recreated in the game engine and lead to some very impressive visuals. Another game that uses this method is Witchfire, which has a similar vibe to The Elder Scrolls, so if you want to see more of what might be possible with the visuals, look up Witchfire, I'll link a trailer in my video on it down below if you want to check those out. And what makes the development and this new engine of Elder Scrolls the most exciting to me is the fact that Todd Howard said back in 2016 that the team was waiting for the technology to catch up to create the game they wanted to and their vision for Elder Scrolls 6. So it looks like finally that moment has come, they have the right technology, they have the right engine, and the right people in place to create this game that they've thought about for so many years. 
So altogether, it looks like Elder Scrolls 6 will be using a new rendering engine, new lighting, a new landscape system, and a new animation system, plus the photogrammetry. And the last aspect of development I want to cover is from the composer of Skyrim, Jeremy Sewell, who announced on his Facebook page his involvement with The Elder Scrolls 6. He said, quote, As so many of my fans have asked, while I've not said much about this out of courtesy to Bethesda, I would never turn my back on The Elder Scrolls, and I believe that my involvement would hinge on a creative decision on their part and where they want to take the franchise. To confirm, I am currently not involved with The Elder Scrolls 6. And I tend to agree with the current community idea that the game is just too early in development for Bethesda to start considering bringing in the composer, but I would be very surprised if Bethesda doesn't involve Jeremy later in the development process. And for the most part, that covers most of the important development that has happened throughout the past few years around The Elder Scrolls VI. The next story I want to cover will be important for The Elder Scrolls VI, and it's in regards to Microsoft purchasing the parent company of Bethesda, which is ZeniMax Media. Following the purchase, there were questions around the gaming communities wondering if Microsoft would decide to make The Elder Scrolls VI and future Bethesda properties an exclusive to Microsoft consoles. Jim Ryan, the Sony president and CEO, gave an interview to a Russian news agency which was then translated by Games Radar, where he said, quote, that's a decision that is out of our hands, we'll have to wait and see what happens. And this is not the most reassuring news, but not surprising considering Sony has already had deals in place for timed exclusives for two other Bethesda titles like Ghostwire Tokyo and Deathloop. So I bet they are just trying to figure out what makes the most sense for Microsoft. But then on the other end, Xbox CFO Tim Stewart gave additional clarification on the future of Bethesda titles. He said, quote, What we'll do in the long run is we don't have intentions of just pulling all of Bethesda content out of Sony or Nintendo or otherwise. But what we want is we want that content to either be first or better or best, or pick your differentiated experience on our platforms. And I tend to agree with this style of marketing. They will allow their games to be on all platforms, but that's because Microsoft is confident in their hardware and optimization of the games and are basically saying that Xbox consoles will, in theory, run Bethesda titles better than Sony titles, which will point more fans into buying up the Xbox name. So if you are potentially worried about Bethesda titles not coming to PlayStation or Nintendo consoles, it doesn't sound like that should be the case. Let's move on to the location rumor, which for a while has circulated around the title Redfall. ZeniMax was working to trademark the title in February of 2019, but the title Redfall was already being utilized by a company BookBreeze, which published a sci-fi book series under the same name. BookBreeze wanted to take ZeniMax to court, but they were able to settle their trademark dispute sometime before that. Once the trademark dispute was settled, ZeniMax was allowed to use the title and it got fans starting to speculate why ZeniMax was fighting so hard for this title and what property they wanted to use it for. The immediate speculation went to Elder Scrolls and fans started to check lore and areas for any possible names with Redfall. Unfortunately, in this regard, nothing came up. Then the conversation shifted away from a place, and fans started to think could this potentially be a plague that was teased in Skyrim. There was a quest line with the Affliction, which is a plague that causes people to develop red skin and vomit, and the origins of the disease were speculated to be in High Rock, and more specifically Daggerfall, which is one of the major kingdoms in High Rock. And the name Redfall then comes from the red from the plague, plus fall from Daggerfall, its origin, and this combined could give the Elder Scrolls 6, Elder Scrolls 6, Redfall. And for the most part, I really like this idea. It would be completely different than other games that kind of follow this sword and sorcery vibe. I think if this story is true, it would fit perfectly, and I'd be really excited to see what types of quests and NPCs would have in such a unique world with this plague where it's not a war or it's not a lot of the other stories that tend to fall in these same tropes. But that's not the only rumor that points to the game being set in a certain area. Another fan compared the area in the trailer and cleaned up the image, and is convinced that the game will be set in Hammerfall. There is going to be disagreements about the area, and not everything checks out when comparing areas to areas in the Elder Scrolls Online, 
but I will link all these different speculation articles down below for anyone to check out and decide for themselves. The last location rumor I want to cover is some fans even think this could be an island of Yokuda, which is a completely different continent that eventually sinks in the Elder Scrolls universe, but because of some of the geography from the trailer and maps we have of this island, it could be the next game area as well and depends how crazy Bethesda wants to get. But even after all the speculation and rumors have circulated around the location, Todd Howard did confirm back in 2018 that the team had already decided on a region that the Elder Scrolls 6 would be based in, and that the decision was decided a while ago, which means the team had decided well before the game was even in pre-production where it was going to be set. When asked if fans would be able to figure out which region the game would be based in just off the trailer, Todd said, I would obviously say yes, and then he murmurs that it's intentionally difficult to figure out exactly what the area is, and you can rule some things out, but you also have to rule some things in. And he closes out by saying the first thing we do is the world, so we've known for a while where it's set. Once again, this isn't too surprising, if they made the area so easy to guess where it is, that wouldn't be any fun, so they made it intentionally vague so fans could debate it for this exact reason, and fans wouldn't be sure until we got more details. So what should we expect from the title moving forward? Early speculation points to the release of this game being sometime in 2025 or slightly after. There will most likely be leaks right up until the game is released. There was a bigger, now confirmed fake Elder Scrolls 6 leak that circulated like wildfire in the community and I really didn't cover in this video, but it stated that the game would be called Redfall and gave additional details about story and gameplay. And I definitely expect leaks like this to continue to circulate throughout the community and become more and more convincing as we get further into the development process. Bethesda has said they are going to show off less and less of their games through the development process and want to save the actual bigger reveals until the game is almost completed. So yes, The Elder Scrolls 6 is still coming, and the location can be figured out using the trailer, but we will have quite a while until anything is completely confirmed. That's where I'm going to end this video. Make sure to like and share, subscribe for weekly gaming news, and I will see you guys in the next one.